happy Saturday. Is it just me or do people who make mugs always make them for lefties? I feel like when you are drinking out of a coffee mug, you should be able to see the, the Mickey in this case while you're sipping. And for a righty, you're just gonna get a flake. Anyways, happy Saturday. Welcome back to the vlog. Uh, this morning you saw me putting on sunscreen as I do every morning. I'm wearing the La Roche-Posay Anthelos Melton Sunscreen Milk SPF 100. It's a chemical sunscreen. There is no cast with it, but it is shiny. It's water resistant. You know, a lot of times people will comment that sunscreen makes them look greasy. Um, and I think much of what that is that you're seeing is actually just the fact that sunscreen forms a film on the skin and when the light bounces off of it it looks shiny so one way around that is to use a powder over your sunscreen however one problem with dabbing on powder is that you might be removing some sunscreen creating gaps in the protection uh, so if you're going to do that i actually recommend using a spf powder on top um, I happen to have here the one by Color Science. It is very good. This one I really like a lot. But Derma E makes a affordable version of that. That's very good. Um, I'll list it down below. There are a few other brands that make them too. Um, and what I like about these is that they um, often have a little bit of oil absorbing property to them as well. So if you are somebody with an oily skin type, it's a good thing to dab on to the skin to kind of help reduce that shininess. Yeah, I think they're useful on top of sunscreen. However, you don't want to rely on an SPF powder alone because it doesn't create a film on the skin. In other words, you don't want your SPF powder replacing your base layer of sunscreen. You need that base layer of film, even though it is shiny, but yeah, if you just use powder by itself, you're going to have too many gaps. And coverage um, and skip areas. I mean, just think about, about it for a minute. It's just powder that you're dusting on. It's not like it's going to cover every single little uh, centimeter square of surface area of your face. With a cream or a lotion or a gel, you have a much better chance of getting that film. Anyways, today I'm going to go run errands after I get dressed. I will take you guys along with me. But before I do that, this morning for my workout, I used these ankle weights. They're by Tone It Up. Uh, I really like them. They stay on your ankles. They don't slide around. And they're two and a half pounds. I like doing them uh, when I do like little YouTube videos and stuff. I like putting these on sometimes to just increase the intensity. I am on my way out to run errands. I'm slightly tempted to stop at Tuesday morning. I want to get a lamp, another lamp for my apartment. Uh, I just left the Bunko bank and I want to stop at the P.O. box. Uh, media update. I've got two movies that I watched recently. One I was chatting about with you guys a while back uh, was on Netflix. Is on Netflix I think still. Cool Hand Luke. Rather enjoyed that. Um, and one thing about that movie that uh, I just kind of observed. I don't know when that movie was filmed. Many, 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 several decades ago we'll just say. Um, is with Paul Newman. It's very good. Anyways, what I noticed in that movie that struck me as interesting is the body habitus of the men in that movie. The especially Paul Newman. They were all like he was obviously in very good shape and like, you know, I won't say ripped, but like athletic in good shape in that movie. Fast forward to now. Whenever there is a movie where they're like, guys, they are like massively jacked, you know, like the muscle mass. It's just, it's just interesting, like what the Hollywood and the media, how they portray the male physique with time. Like back then, I feel like that was a lot more of an attainable physique. Like, oh, maybe I'll take up, you know, riding my bike or whatever. It's a more natural physique. Whereas now I imagine all of these actors, when they get ready for a movie and they do these intense like fitness regimens to get prepped for a movie, you know 
they've got to be doing some kind of performance enhancing drugs. There's no way that people get to kind of muscle mass that that um that they do like in those Avengers movies plus I'm um, you know I'm sure it's all digitally enhanced or what have you um but I don't know it just makes you think you know people always focus on how there are these unrealistic unrealistic expectat beauty expectations on women now there are a lot of unrealistic beauty or physique expectations on men like for young guys to be looking at these like actors and whatever that are basically you know they're 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 pharmacologically enhanced you know it I mean it's just it seems unreasonable unattainable especially in the duration of time that goes by that has elapsed in which they obtain, uh, obtain these results it just seems to me I'm um, suspicious I think a lot of them are So yeah, that, that was one movie that I watched and really enjoyed. The other movie that I watched is called Captain Fantastic. And I actually enjoyed that too. It was not like, I wouldn't, I, I give it like a three and a half out of five stars. It was good. It was entertaining. I do enjoy Viggo Mortensen. Um, a, a few of the, a little bit of the script was a little forced, but um, overall it was good. And I really liked it. I especially liked the, the latter third of the movie. Yeah, he's a good he's a good actor. Apparently, there was this um, <laughs> this I don't know if it was an April Fool's joke or what. People were com um, perpetuating the myth that he had died. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hope that never happens. You know, as a celebrity, that's a thing now. People will just like tweet "rest in peace." And it's like, I'm not dead yet. And then people assume that they are dead. And maybe they meant their career is dying off. And it gets misinterpreted. I'm telling you guys, social media is a menace. Like, the, the way misinformation gets spread, it is, it is a pestilence on society. Social media can be, for sure, for sure. I mean, even in, just in the skincare space alone, since being on this channel, like when I first started YouTube, these kind of, kind of comments that I was getting, and I've since made movies addressing a lot of that type of comment, but it was just like, where are people getting these ideas that X, Y, and Z is like somehow bad? But lies get spread. I mean, I would get comments on like my earlier videos and I've since made videos debunking some of these comments so I think people maybe go to those I don't know I mean I still get comments like 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 um, the jar packaging thing I actually haven't made a video on that people are always like phobic of the jar packaging that products cannot be effective if they're in a jar and that's absolutely not true I mean whatever um, and like I, comments about phenoxyethanol. Like you would think that, you would think that L'Oreal was was selling Agent Orange or something. I mean the yeah, it's just and it's not like one or two off comments. It it would come in you know droves uh, for a while. Every video I would have a comment like that. Anyways, what I'm getting at is a internet is like hotbed of bad information bad information and the worst is that when you know something is wrong and you say it's wrong and you show the evidence that it's wrong people still don't believe you they believe the internet lie and that's fine i mean people are entitled to their own belief system i guess but it's just like oh god i have been creating speaking of social media i have been creating or on TikTok. And the only reason I do it is because it's much easier to create content in TikTok and upload it to Instagram as far as the little video clip style instead of doing their Reels platform. I you know, um, And so I, I, have, I enjoy the, uh, the, my people who have teamed up, who have signed up 
or followed me or whatever on TikTok. I appreciate the audience there. They're very nice. Um, but uh, yeah, what I'm getting at is I'm on TikTok a lot more. I don't actually consume it though. I just go in there, put up my content and then interact with whoever comments on the, the little TikTok. But I don't like actually spend time in TikTok. I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah. So I don't actually spend much time in TikTok like as a consumer of it. I should, I would probably, you know, get better at it if I watch other people's. Anyways, what I'm getting at is TikTok is much different than the other platforms in that it's got that, it's got that je ne sais, uh, <laughs> that new, fresh, unfiltered way about it. I have lived through all the social media platforms, you guys. And for those of you who are young out there, enjoy TikTok as it is now while it lasts. While it's just like people being themselves and like creating like little funny things in their pajamas or whatever. You know that's going to change. Like pretty soon it's just going to become something else. I remember, for example, I remember the days of, uh, here's the thing, with social media platforms, that either, you know, there. This is these are the this is the glory days of TikTok, what we're living in right now. It's either gonna go one of two ways. It's either going to collapse, and that'll be the end of that, or it'll turn into something that nobody, like, is uh, it's like a little cringy, and the younger generation, once that happens, will not be interested in it. That is, that is what the social media platforms are like. Fortunately, YouTube has kind of stayed keeping people interested, but by not changing too much. Instagram was literally, they need to change the name of Instagram. They need to change it to instant gratification because it is not Instagram anymore. It is not an instant posting. Everybody on there, with the exception of maybe people who you know are not, um, not in the public, the, everybody pretty much doesn't instantly post a, an image. Uh, they either edit it um, or they work on their caption. I mean, even I don't edit my photos on Instagram <laughs> at all. Um, I might like brighten them up or something if they're really bad, but I don't do anything. I do, however, think about and spend a lot of time with the caption and then I try and investigate the hashtag. So I want it to reach people. I don't want to just like put it up there, but that's that's not Instagram. Instagram is like you take the picture, you put it up right away. I mean, that's, that's the name of the game, but it's no longer that game anymore. Instead, it's all about instant gratification once it's posted. Uh, it's gratifying to either get the positive feedback or whatever. I mean, that's what people are hooked on, that dopamine surge of acceptance, I guess. Um, so it should be changed, the name should be changed. Facebook should no longer be called Facebook. It should be called, you know, Know. the Sears catalog that's what it feels like <laughs> honestly it feels like the Sears catalog um YouTube is still I feel like YouTube is the only thing that has remained somewhat authentic to its original thing although fortunately it has evolved in my opinion somewhat negatively but also somewhat positively and then we have better you know, more engaging content versus originally it was like, I, I didn't do you, I didn't, I didn't watch YouTube or consume it in its early days at all. It wasn't until much later that I started consuming YouTube and I got hooked in watching it. Um, and I think it's, it's better now than it was initially, but maybe there was a period of time, see that I don't, I wasn't consuming it where it was better than it is now. I don't know. All right, I'm here at the PO box, fingers crossed. There isn't some mini trafugalty like my key not fitting in the box or them having the wrong package or something. All right, let's put you in there. Here at Tuesday morning, I kind of want yet another water bottle. I'm looking for one that will hold a liter of water, but is easy to walk with on the treadmill for my cool down walk. The only one that I have is that one Nalgene with the narrow um, 
opening. This one looks promising. How much does this hold? A liter. Boom. Odor, shatter, and scratch resistant. I like that you can, what I like about this, I'm getting this, <laughs> is that you can open the top and put powder in. Cause that's what I hate about that one now, Jean, is it just has a little tiny, the, the narrow opening and some powders, it's hard to scoop in there. Cool, $6.99. <sighs> these are cute, but they're too small for me. Oh, these are to infuse the water with fruit. Okay tempted by that but I'm gonna resist. Tuesday morning always has these boxes like to store I don't know paperwork in but I was noticing this one here isn't it cute the little like ballet dancer dancers on it. I have a good collection of yoga mats. I'm kind of tempted to get another a new yoga mat but I don't need that. This is the one I have actually only a different color I think it looks like it I don't feel like pulling it out but yeah it's that Gaim brand. I've been really happy with the quality of it. Ooh, not mix. They moved their craft section to this aisle. This looks promising, this build-a-scene craft kit. I have to be careful with these <laughs> craft kits because I get sucked in and then I don't make the stuff, but these are really nice. I have a limited selection. Ooh, these Illustrator Spectral Noir. I wonder if those are any good. Are pretty. Hmm. I like those. They look good for planning. American Crafts. London, Utah. This kind of is like a knockoff of um, Happy Planner. Ew, check out this undated planner. Little mermaids and what are those called? Narwhals or something? It's a gummy bear notebook. I'm not such a fan of, I'm, I'm not a fan of lined paper. Here in Costco and these are new, these little French mini eclairs. Aren't they adorable? A different color, passion fruit. There's also these, that looks interesting. Like a boba tea popsicle. Oh, look who can't help himself but pop up with yet another product in Costco. <gasps> Uh, claiming to treat and prevent mask knee. Let's see, what is in this? All right, so you get two cleansers for $19.97. And there is nothing magical about this, you guys, that would make it noteworthy for reducing mask knee other than just simply washing your face. <laughs> oh, Gotta give him credit for trying. That was a virtual cheek pinch. Like, I don't know. I kind of like Nasif with uh, facial hair. It gives him a more endearing quality. Is it just me? I don't know. Uh, Egyptian magic. I do have a review video on that. This Basha toner that I thought looked notable is still here. Has anybody tried it since I said the ingredients seemed okay? comment below. Cooker apples are here cooling. Um, if you are new here, I do this where I make slow cooked chopped apples in my slow cooker and eat on them throughout the week. It's like a little meal prep thing I do. Anyways, I wanted to share with you guys. This time I put um, some of this ginger juice in and I think it's going to come out really good. Yeah, very easy to do. You just take a three pound bag of gala apples, wash them, chop them in half, core them, and then dice them put them in the slow cooker with one tablespoon of lemon juice. This time I put two tablespoons of this ginger juice, although that is not necessary. Um, some cinnamon and also uh, one tablespoon of arrowroot starch. And I just stir it with this fork, set it to low on my slow cooker, or actually medium heat and just let it go until they're to a desired doneness. I, th I believe at this stage, you also could use an immersion blender and make it more like applesauce, but I kind of like it chunky like this. The arrowroot starch helps thicken up the juices. Very hey guys, I am back obviously, and I did, like I said, get this water bottle. I cleaned it before filling it up with ice water and a few, one of those uh, hydration up electrolyte mixes. Yeah, 
really pleased with this Tuesday morning find. Yeah, I like having water uh, when I do the cool down portion of my run. You know, after I finish my run, it goes into cool down mode and you just walk for a while. I like to drink water, but my Nalgene is kind of cumbersome here. And as I was saying in Tuesday morning, I don't know if you picked that up, but um, pouring some of the electrolyte powders in to, to the, that one narrow mouth Nalgene can be tricky. And if it's the wide mouth Nalgene, then it ends up Splat, you get too much splash back when you're trying to walk and drink at the same time. Yeah, uh, so this is perfect. I thought it said it was a liter, but it definitely seems like less than a liter. I don't know. I'm happy with it. And this little ball get gadget is handy for dissolving the powder because I always get a little bit of residue down in the bottom. Do you guys get that with like electrolyte mixes? It's kind of cool because the ball makes it look like the water is green. <laughs> uh, so that will be my last water for the day. I like to shut it off around, I don't know, 8 p.m. with my water drinking. So I try and get it in continuously throughout the day. So I stay hydrated and I'm not overdoing it with um, water all at once. It's not good to chug water. That's like a really popular thing. Oh, just chug a gallon. But what ends up happening is you just quickly pee out most of it and you don't really hydrate as well. It's better to get it in slowly, you know, kind of consistently throughout the day versus all at once. Otherwise, you'll just, like I said, pee it all out at once. But I really like having cold water when I'm doing the cool down walk because it helps cool down my body temperature. As you can see, I worked up quite a sweat. Speaking of cool down, remember last week at Costco, I got this cooling blanket. I'm pretty happy with it. It definitely feels cool. Like if you are cold and you get into bed it it'll feel chilly on on your skin um but i have actually just been laying it down and laying on top of it because then it kind of keeps the body cool as opposed to laying on the blanket i notice that helps likewise my silk pillowcase this is my sleeping glow pillow it also keeps my my head cool i love this pillow you guys it helps me sleep so well at night speaking of costco wins look what is back in stock i almost forgot about the existence of beets because they've been out of these volupta beet chips for so long and i saw them snagged them no question they're really good um they are as good as the as the Rhythm Superfood Beet Chips. Who has been here long enough to remember when I was getting the Rhythm Superfood Beet Chips because they were on Ibotta for the longest time? Uh, and that is what got me hooked. Yeah, I haven't bought the Rhythm brand of beet chips in a while, but recently I did have their carrot chips. Yeah, it's like, whatever, it's just carrots. How can it be that special? But something about the way they dry their vegetables and stuff, winning their kale chips are also really good and i don't know what if it's just my imagination but i feel like the rhythm kale chips are big pieces and they don't break up as easily in the bag so by the time when you open when you get a new bag it's like everything's intact as opposed to like kale chip crumbs <laughs> Uh, anyways guys, I'm gonna do my cool down, my stretching routine, and then I'm gonna relax for the rest of the evening. So I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here, but thank you guys for following along with me today. I hope you had a wonderful Saturday. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.